Hello everyone and welcome. Today's video covers three people who suffered some of the worst fates you can imagine. The final story is a particularly tragic ordeal, so viewer discretion is advised. Yellowstone National Park is a national park in the United States that is famous for its wildlife and for its many geothermal features. Beneath Yellowstone is something called the Yellowstone Caldera, which is actually the largest volcanic system in all of North America. The magma chamber that is underneath Yellowstone is thought to be a single massive chamber that is 37 miles, 59 meters long, 18 miles, 29 kilometers wide, and 3 to 7, 4.8 to 11.3 kilometer miles deep. At some point, this chamber is expected to erupt like it has at least three times in history and decimate most of North America. This caldera is responsible for much of the geothermal activity visible on the surface and manifests as geysers and hot springs. In fact, one of the most famous geysers in the entire world is located here known as Old Faithful because it erupts a jet of water every 60 to 90 minutes. The hot springs in the park are warmed by the geothermal activity and can range from lukewarm pools to bubbling cauldrons of steam and boiling water. Most of them are hotter than a very hot bath, and many of them are even hotter at just below boiling, or literally boiling. Since 1870, 22 people have died in the park in the hot springs from either accidentally falling in or from carelessness, except for one. On July 20th, 1981, 24-year-old David Allen Kerwin was driving through Yellowstone in an area known as Fountain Paint Pot Thermal Area. This is an area that has a bunch of brightly colored blue, green, and orange hot springs that range from hot to boiling. He was driving with his friend Ronald Ratliff and Ronald's dog, Moosey. At around 1 kindness p.m., they parked in one of the visitor areas so they could get out and check out the colorful hot springs. As they were getting out, Moosey managed to jump out of the truck and took off towards the hot springs and immediately jumped right into a pool known as the Celestine Pool. Moosey immediately started yelping in pain from the water. Because the Celestine Pool he had jumped into has been measured at just a few degrees below boiling. David and Ronald sprinted over to the pool and got to the edge and called to Moosey, but in his panic, Moosey wasn't able to swim over to them. So David decided that he couldn't just stand by and let Moosey die, and so he got ready to jump in the water after him. Some other visitors to the park noticed that he looked like he was going to jump in and tried to warn him not to jump because of how hot the water was. But David was determined to save Moosey, and so he brushed them off, took two steps back, and then dove in head first into the boiling water. He swam out to Moosey in the almost boiling water, and when he got him, he grabbed him and began swimming back to shore. But before he made it back, he slipped under the water. He ended up having to let go of Moosey and swim back to the edge all alone. When he got to the edge, he was already so weak that he could barely make it out, and Ronald had to help him out. In that brief second helping him out, Ronald even suffered at second-degree burns, pulling him out of the water. Some other visitors helped David to the sidewalk, and reality had begun to sink in. And David would even say, That was stupid. How bad am I? That was a stupid thing I did. Exposure to the boiling water had left David blind and with third-degree burns on 100% of his entire body. Some of the visitors then tried to help David get his shoes off, and in doing so, most of the skin peeled off of his foot. In fact, skin was peeling off of most of his body. He was eventually taken to Salt Lake City Hospital, but died the following morning from his burns. Unfortunately, Muzi wouldn't survive either. Although David acted bravely to try to save Moosey, ultimately it was a decision that cost him his life. In the history of the park, many of the burns that visitors have gotten have been from saving pets that have accidentally gone into the boiling pools, because as beautiful as they are to look at, these pools are just extremely dangerous. Before dawn on October 11, 2012, Jose Molina left to go work in Santa Fe Springs, California where he worked as a maintenance worker for canned goods food company called Bumble Bee Foods. That morning, Jose was going about his day performing his normal tasks, which included maintenance on one of the large machines in the factory. He walked into a large cylindrical opening of the machine and headed towards the back where the maintenance needed to be done. 
As he was working, all of a sudden, these giant pellets of tuna cans started rolling into the machine and blocked him at the back of the machina where he was doing the repair. Josie would have likely called out to the person who rolled the pallets in, but because of how loud it was in the factory, they weren't able to hear him. Then Jose would have heard the horrifying sound of the door of the machine closing. What had happened was that his co-workers thought that he had gone to the bathroom and didn't realize he was inside the machine. Not thinking that anyone was in there, they then loaded all of the tuna cans in order to sterilize them, because the machine that Jose was working on and that his co-workers had just blocked him into was actually a giant pressure cooker. Inside the machine with the door closed, Jose would have known that there was no way for his co-workers to know that he was in there. Then, even worse than the sound of the door closing, Jose probably would have heard the horrifying sound of the giant industrial oven turning on to sterilize all of the cans blocking him in. Over the next two hours, the temperature of the oven went up to 270 degrees and cooked Jose alive. Later on, one of the managers of the factory started asking around about Jose's whereabouts and even made an announcement over the loudspeaker. But it wasn't until the oven was reopened and the tuna was pulled out that they found Jose's body. In the aftermath of the event, Bumblebee Foods agreed to pay $6 million for violating a number of safety rules. In addition to the fine paid by Bumblebee Foods, two managers at the facility were fined $30,000 each for not following procedures that also contributed to Jose's death.